how much therapeutic red light is there in the morning and evening sun? Now, previously I did a video looking at how much red light there is in the midday sun at different times of year, both summer and winter. A lot of people ask me, hey, Alex, what about uh, sunrise and sunset? Now, this is a good question because we do know that there is less blue light in the morning sun. So how much red light is there? Well, I got out my spectrometer. I went outside here yeah, in Dubai and I tested both morning readings and evening readings. Now, I do need to mention that here in Dubai, you get a bit of air pollution. Uh, there's a lot of dust from the desert. Uh, you also get a lot of humidity. So bear that in mind when we do look at these numbers. Still, what I'm going to do first is compare the midday readings with the previous midday readings that I had from New Zealand. So the midday reading was taken in the middle of spring in Dubai. It was a rather warm day. Uh, what I've done is I've pasted in all the data from my spectrometer and we can crunch the numbers. Now, unsurprisingly, that was higher than the midday winter reading I had in New Zealand, uh, but lower than the summer reading uh, from New Zealand. So remember, that's just the intensity, total intensity, the power output of all wavelengths measured. So that's from 350 through to 1050. That's all my spectrometer reads. The dominant wavelength was similar to the summer sun there, 495 nanometers. Uh, what's interesting here is the red percent, very similar, 16.3%, similar to the uh, New Zealand winter and summer months, green and blue, all similar as well. So what all these data points here are, are the exact uh, power density for each wavelength, okay, measured in microwatts over meter squared. And I've sorted it from 620 to 680. This is what I did in the previous video. So I thought I'd do the same here. By the way, I'll get to the morning and uh, sunset data after we run through this, because I think this is quite interesting. And for reference sake, I've got a block blue light mega, the data points in this column. Now, I've totaled up the power outputs. And down here, you see that there was a total of 8.7 milliwatts over centimeter squared for the 620 to 680. Now, that's slightly higher than the New Zealand winter sun, but lower than the summer sun reading and much lower than the block blue light panel. So pretty much it just shows that winter has the less amount, spring it starts picking up, and then summer is the most intensive. Of course, I need to repeat these measurements for Dubai summer and Dubai winter to get a more accurate result, but still, it's just, I'm putting this in for reference sake. Now we can go down to the uh, near infrared where I look at 800 through to 870. Uh, we had a figure of 7.9, so it's higher than the New Zealand winter, 7.3, but lower than the New Zealand summer, but much lower than the block blue light panel. And um, the takeaway is, is rather simple. You can see the summaries here. Now my findings here align with the conclusions I had in my other videos, pretty much if you want therapeutic red and near infrared light without the blues without the greens without the uv light uh then the panels are the best um and if you if you can't get a panel or you can't get a red light therapy device then even though the summer and the spring readings are slightly higher to be honest getting outdoors in winter is actually better because um you don't get all the dangerous uv rays and of course it's much more bearable uh good luck standing outside in dubai summer sun for 20 30 minutes um but it may be possible in winter anyway that's the midday data what you all wanted to see was the sunset and sunrise data hey quick question for you are you enjoying this do you find value in it if so hit the like button below uh, it really means a lot because it tells me what people like and what they don't like and I'll try to do more videos of what people like and also if you want to see more videos like this more reviews experiments analysis analysis is that word uh hit the subscribe button and uh, feel free to leave a comment as well so the sun is currently rising at about 6 a.m here in Dubai so I took readings at 6 30 and then at 7 a.m so half an hour and then 60 minutes plus sunrise uh it's actually hard to get a reading right on sunrise i thought this was a bit better because the sun is well and truly up then uh it's easier to get a clearer reading as well uh and then later on i did a sunset reading 
Now, I also snapped an air quality reading here for the day I did the morning test. And you can see it's not the best. Uh, the humidity level is up, but there's a lot of uh, dust particles in the air. So that may impact the results. I'm not too sure. Okay, so here you've got the 6.30 reading and here the 7 a.m. reading. And for reference sake, I've got the midday reading as well. So first up, let's look at the total intensity. Remember, this is measuring all wavelengths from the device. Uh, 87 was the midday figure. You can see that the 630, the sunrise figure, was a lot lower. And it's quite amazing how much it jumps in half an hour. Uh, the difference here, 22 for 630, up to 44, it doubles. Doubles in intensity in half an hour. Remember, that's an hour after sunrise. And the dominant wavelength is a lot different to the midday reading. Where it gets really interesting, though, is here. The percent breakdown. So the red percent ratio is 21% red at 6.30, 18% at 7 a.m., and 16% at midday. So the red intensity relative to the other wavelengths remember this is just a percentage of the total not the actual power output but the red percentage does decrease as the day goes on so what's making up for that well the green 76 it goes up to 79 and the blue only 2.7 that goes up to 4.5 so as the red percent decreases as the sun gets higher then the green and the blue increases so you're getting a relatively more blended balanced light at midday compared to uh less green less blue and more red relative relatively speaking so yeah that is all interesting now let's look at the total power output again we're going to look at 620 to 680 nanometers so i've done a total down here and these figures are again in milliwatts over centimeter squared and what we see is very interesting. At 6.30 a.m., half an hour after sunrise, you're only getting 2.8 milliwatts over centimeter squared of therapeutic red light, which is rather low. It's, it's very low. It goes up a lot. It nearly doubles in half an hour to 7 a.m. And then it's nearly doubling, or not quite doubling, uh, up to midday. But the difference between 6.30 and midday is huge. It's a big change so you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna hold my my thoughts and practical implications of this until we've looked at the nerve read readings so let's move down to that that's where we look at the 800 to 850 uh, 870 sorry remember the near infrared does go beyond this it goes well past the readings in my spectrometer but i just i wanted to pick a window and look at that now again the middays let's just say eight milliwatts morning sunrise three half an hour later 4.8 so it's following a very similar pattern to the red light and remember these figures are well below the uh, panel data which was 30 in the red and 39 in the near infrared so way 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 lower than the red light therapy panels okay what about sunset so does that change much well i'm going to pull up the sunset data here this is 6 p.m. Uh, I think the sun set around 6.30 or thereabouts. Um, based on where I was, this was the best reading I could get because the sun will, will disappear behind a building. So the air quality was moderate. Uh, humidity was a lot lower at this time of the day. Um, I'm just putting that in in case it uh, does impact numbers. All right, first up, let's look at the power intensity. It's actually the lowest of the day at, in the afternoon. So 13.4, a lot lower than half an hour after sunrise. Uh, the ratios, there's more red relatively than the midday, but actually less than the sunrise. So now let's look at the red total. The red total here was very, very low, 1.6. Uh, so that's just because the intensity is a lot less in the afternoon or evening. 1.6, so much lower than the sun sunrise. Uh, and then for the near infrared, again, 1.7, so much, much lower. And you can see a bit of a summary here. Okay, so that's the data. What does it all mean? Well, if you're looking to maximize the amount of therapeutic red light, and I say therapeutic, meaning in the 600s and 800s uh, 
you know, the, the true photobiomodulation wavelengths. If you're wanting to maximize that without getting all the other wavelengths, your embers, your blues, your greens, your ultraviolets, your fire infrareds, all of those things, then the best way to do it, best in terms of purely looking for output, not factoring in other things, is to get a red light therapy device, preferably a panel because it's a large treatment area, putting out a lot of intensity. As you can see on screen, you're getting so much more power in the red and the near infrared range from one of those panels, like way more power than you're going to get from the sun. And of course, the panel doesn't have all of the other wavelengths. So that's simple. Uh, panels, products are best. However, if you're wanting to get full spectrum, you're wanting to get the blues, the greens, the mid, the fire infrareds, and even the UV rays, then sure, the sun at the moment is still the best option. There are no products out there that are true full spectrum, high power output devices. Or, of course, if you're on a super tight budget and you can't afford a product or a panel and you're relying on the sun. So if you are going down this path, what is the best way to do it? Is it morning time? Is it evening time? Is it midday? Well, of course, do it when you can. I mean, if you're working, you may find it difficult to get out of this time of the day. Also, if you live in a high heat environment, such as the Middle East, you may not want to go out in the middle of the day. So again, do what you can. But looking at the data, purely from a power density, power output point of view, i.e. you're trying to get as much power in as possible, then uh, yeah, midday is going to be the best. The problem with midday, of course, it may be very hot. You're going to get a lot of UV light, so you're going to burn. The skin's going to burn uh, if you're out there for too long. So then we look at the morning or the evenings. Now, the morning sun is a lot more intense, so you're actually getting a lot more energy in the therapeutic reds in the morning sessions than you are in the afternoon. The sweet spot is to get sun an hour after sunrise too early in the day and yeah you're getting more red light from a relative point of view but it's actually quite weak so based on my data the 7 a.m was a lot better than the 6 30 for instance which is probably good for most people but it means you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn and get outside you can have a bit of a sleep in and make a cup of coffee and then go outside what did surprise me a lot is the evening time the sunset time is very very weak and that time of the day actually had much lower uh, air particle matter in the in the in the sky so i thought maybe that would help boost the intensity but no it didn't so best time of the day is morning maybe an hour after sunrise if you're looking at getting as much red light without the heat and is uh, and the downsides of uv rays now i said this in my previous sun videos i think what even trumps all of this is winter sun winter midday sun because we know the intensity of the midday sun is so much higher and it's even still quite high in winter thing is if you can go out in winter time it's probably a lot more bearable to be outside for a longer time you know 30 minutes or so and you're not going to get the harmful uv rays so that's actually the best way in my opinion to get a lot of natural th therapeutic red light and near infrared light without the downsides, without the burning, without the heat exposure, without the sweat buildup. Uh, of course, winter may be too cold for you in some parts of the world, in which case you're going to have to find the uh, sweet spot for you. But yeah, those are my findings. Uh, curious to know what you think of all of this, if you found it interesting or useful. Uh, I was a bit surprised, uh, just like I was when I compared the summer and the winter data. I was surprised how low the values were with the sunrise and in particular the sunset uh does it change anything for me not really uh, i still enjoy using my panels i do it four or five times a week five ten minutes uh a session i stand actually quite close to the panels now you know an inch or two away from them uh and i've been doing that for a long time and it seems to work i still get outside when i can uh but i obviously don't want to get burnt to a crisp as well so curious does this data change anything for you let me know your thoughts down below and then check out this video here youtube thinks you're gonna like it i hope you do like it